What's up? Today I'm going to show you how to design your very own haunted house. This project was inspired by my friend and art teacher Molly Crocker. I'll put a link to her video and channel below. Be sure to check it out. If you're new to my channel, please be sure to stick around and check out my other videos. I have a ton of amazing fun art tutorials on this channel and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button to show your support. You're going to want to start off today by drawing a horizon line and some rectangles stacked on top of each other. Notice how they are really crooked and wobbly. That makes your house look kind of old and dilapidated. So I'll walk you through that now. First, draw a straight line a few inches from the bottom of your paper. This is called the horizon line. Next, draw a large crooked square right on that horizon line in the middle of your paper. Now I'm adding a smaller rectangle on top and a couple longer rectangles stacked on either side. Now I'm going to erase the top line of the middle square and add a trapezoid shaped roof. Now I'm going to add a couple triangle shaped roofs. Notice how this triangle is shorter and this triangle is longer and skinnier. It's fun to play around with different sizes and shapes. Now I'm adding another trapezoid shaped roof on the left. And I'm going to add an extra mini structure here with another trapezoid shaped roof. Now you can start adding some fun details to your house. I'm drawing a couple long, thin wooden posts in the front of the house. For steps, I'm drawing long, crooked rectangles right on top of each other. Notice how each rectangle step is a little bit longer than the one above it. Now I'm adding a rectangular doorway, a half circle that's going to be a basement window, and a large rectangular window right above it. I'm drawing a half oval shape for this upstairs window and another half oval shape for the window next to it. And then on the right, one more window that's that same half oval shape, just longer and more stretched out. On the bottom right, I'm going to draw one more rectangle shaped window and then I'm adding a circular window on the roof. It's really fun to use different shapes and sizes for the windows. I'm going to add a double line around the inside of my center roof and also around this window. Adding double lines is a fun way to make your drawing look more detailed. I'm adding a vertical and horizontal line across this window to create simple window panes. For a more complex window pane, I'm adding a double line inside the circle window, then drawing a bubble letter plus sign inside the circle. I'm adding a double line inside this rectangular window. Here's one more example of how you can draw a window pane. I'm drawing some bars across this basement window to make it extra creepy. You can add window shutters next to a half oval window by drawing this shape. Notice how the shutter on the left is coming unhinged and falling off. Now I'm adding some lines for slats. Okay, this part's really fun. You can make your house look really derelict and abandoned by drawing some wooden boards across your windows. Draw a long rectangle Make the ends rough and jagged so they look old and worn. Then erase the pencil marks behind the board that you just drew. Then draw a nail on each end of your board. It's fun to make the board slant and draw them at different angles. On the right, I'm drawing two overlapping boards that crisscross with each other. Since the front door is missing on my house, I'm going to board up the doorway as well. I'm adding two crisscrossing boards at the top and one wider board with super jagged ends on the bottom. Now I'm going to show you how to draw a few different types of shingles on your roofs. Here I'm drawing several wavy lines across this roof. And on this roof, I'm drawing rows of scallops, starting at the top and working my way down. 
On the upper right, I'm starting at the top and drawing row after row of rectangular shingles. I'm adding this creepy balcony fence to these two rooftops. I'm drawing a crooked old chimney on the side of this roof. I thought it would be fun to add some brickwork on the bottom of my house. I'm drawing several rows of straight lines. Then I'm adding several vertical lines along each row. Then I'm repeating this on the right side. Now I'm going to add a walkway leading up to the steps. Starting at the bottom step, I'm drawing a diagonal line that slants outward. I'm drawing a dead, hollowed out tree in my front yard. I'm adding an old iron gate on the left side of the yard. I'm drawing a creepy jack-o'-lantern sitting on the gate. And adding a spooky owl on the right. Now I'm drawing some cobblestones inside the gate post. Your haunted house won't be complete unless you add a couple grave markers or tombstones outside your house. I'm going to add a creepy little gate near the back of the house with a jack-o'-lantern sitting on top. I want my house to look extra old and run down, so I'm drawing these rough squiggly lines. This makes it look like the outer walls are cracked and crumbling. Now let's add a couple spider webs. You can draw your spider web in a corner like this, or you can draw a full spider web, draw four intersecting lines, then draw a spiral starting from the inside and working your way outwards. Each line of the spiral that you draw should dip and curve inwards towards the center of the web. You may want to add a large full moon rising up from behind your house. You can see I've added the tiny silhouette of a witch flying on a broom and a couple clouds. Now I'm going to draw a couple ghosts popping out of my house one popping out of the window and another coming out of the chimney. There are going to be a couple bats hanging upside down from the branches of the dead tree and a few more bats flying in the sky. To draw a flying bat, start with a tiny M shape for the head, then add the wings. It takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of it. Here you can watch me do it one more time. Start with an M shape for the head, then dip down and up, make another outward dip, make two downward dip for the bottom of the wing, then dip down for the pointy tail in the middle, then repeat on the left side. Okay, now I'm gonna draw spooky eyes and monsters and goblins and ghosts in the windows. This monster looks extra creepy because its hand is reaching out of the window. It's fun and it looks spooky if you draw just eyes and nothing else. I'm drawing the full outline of a ghost in this window. Now I'm going to outline my drawing with an ultrafine sharpie so you can see it better. I love this part, it looks so cool. If you outline your drawing in ultrafine sharpie, you will want to go back afterwards and erase your pencil marks. Now I'm ready to add color. I decided to color my house purple because that's a nice color for Halloween. Okay, it feels important to show you this. There's two great ways that you can color in your windows. The first option is to color everything in black except for the eyeballs that you've drawn. This will look super cool. It also looks really neat if you color in some of the windows yellow or orange. This will make it look like lights are on inside the house. So here's my finished drawing. And you can see I colored it all in. Notice how I left the background white. I kind of like that. Um, it's easier, it takes less time, and your house pops out more. So consider that as an option and have fun.